there's no need to fear. Underdog is here. Time again for the Underdog Show, starring that champion of champions, Underdog. Not a bird, not a plane, not even a frog. Just little low me, Underdog. There's Betsy and his buddy Julie. Go, 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 first on the run. The stories of Nick Craig outrageous. No one could be more courageous. Watch the hunter chase the bocce shooters on the rocks and then there's Underdog, weakened by his fight with the Cloud Men, nevertheless had taken off with Sweet Polly for the planet Cumulus to get back the silver the Cloud Men had stolen. But at that very moment, millions of miles away, the Cloud Men were presenting King Cumulus with the stolen silver. One dozen silver knives and forks and spoons. Throw them in the hopper. More. A silver teapot and a silver tray. Into the hopper. More. Six silver bowls. Into the hopper. One silver ring. Into the hop. Just one silver ring. Yes, and what a time I had getting it. The earthling that owned it was very tough. Ha! Well, throw it in the hopper. Once in the hopper, the pieces of silver slid down a chute and fell into a bin. Then they were scooped up, dumped on the shaking belt, and finally they were dropped into a melter. And when it was melted, the silver was sprayed into the linings of the clouds. Every cloud must have a silver lining. Next. 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 But even all this stolen silver was not enough to give every cloud a silver lining. Everything we've got is gold. Gold chairs, gold tables, gold houses. Nothing but useless gold. The people are getting restless, your majesty. We may have a revolution if we don't have more silver. Your majesty, your majesty. I found it, all the silver we need. Where, where? In the United States Treasury, the place where they make all their coins. There are tons of silver. Good, good, call out the army. We'll go down at once and get it. Stop before I give you a whack. We've come to take the silver back. Who is this little droplet who dares talk to King Cumulus Regulus? You'll find out who he is. He's the strongest, bravest, fastest hero in the whole universe. <laughs> we'll see how strong he is. Go ahead, underdog. Give it to him. <laughs> right through him. Of course, I'm a cloud man. <laughs> now, a lightning jolt you. You big brute, take this and this and this. <laughs> Enough of this nonsense! Toss 
Toss them in the hopper and let us be off for Earth and the silver! Sweet Polly and Underdog had both been lightning jolted. Will they be scooped up and melted down? The answer lies ahead in our next exciting episode. Have some more fish, Tennessee? Fish. Fish. All we ever get around here is fish. Well, I'm sick of it. I want fresh vegetables. Corn, peas, beans, lettuce, spinach. I'm through. Throw that stuff away, Chumley. Uh, but Tennessee... No buts, Chumley. The food here is ridiculous. We're going to complain to Stanley about this now. Now throw it away. <laughs> Chumley. Yes, Mr. Mayor. Yes, yes. Your wife is on her way here now to inspect the zoo? Good heavens! You... Oh, uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you for the warning. Uh, I'd better go right out and... Stanley? Stanley? Where are you, Stanley? Oh, there you are. We have a complaint. Oh, you do, do you? Well... Yes, Stanley. The food here is terrible. We want fresh vegetables, and all we ever get is fish. Fish? You're supposed to have fish. You're a penguin, remember? And penguins eat fish. But I want fresh vegetables. All we have to do is make our own garden and... No, 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 no garden. Besides, I have no time to talk. The mayor's wife is on her way over to inspect the zoo, and she's very particular, and I don't want anything to go wrong. She's a real battle ag. Oh, Mrs. Mayor, come right in, come in. Mr. Livingston, I have heard that conditions in this zoo are terrible, and I came to see for myself. Why, Mrs. Mayor, conditions in this zoo are... Terrible. The food is awful. No garden fresh vegetables. No corn or peas or spinach or anything uh, like Pay that. no attention to him, Mrs. Mayor. He just talks a lot. You come with me and see for yourself. We'll start with the beavers. Chumley, we've got Stanley right where we want him. <laughs> when I get through with him, he'll do just what I want him to do. We'll get that garden. Come on. Yum, yum. Yum, yum. Handsome. Hey, Tennessee. What's the big idea? Just this. We've got a way to get Stanley in our power. Now, here's... Here's the beaver house. Notice what healthy, well-fed... Beavers we have. Food, food, food. A few scraps or a stale bread. Anything. Well, I never. What did I tell you? What did I tell you? Conditions here are terrible. You Tennessee tuxedo. Yeah, I know him, Mrs. Mayor. It's one of his pesky tricks. I assure you, everyone in the zoo gets the best of care. The best. What about the elephant? The elephant? Elephant? I assure you, Mrs. Mayor, our elephant gets the best of care. The best. Better see for yourself. Hey, what's the big idea? Uh, I'm sorry, Peanuts, but Tennessee has a big plan. Right. We're going to make Stanley do anything we want him to do. Now, here's... Yeah, here's our elephant. As you can see, he's a healthy, yeah, happy, contented elephant. Water. Water. Just a drop. Well, I never... Disgraceful. What did I tell you? What did I tell you? What you told me is perfectly true. From now on, I'm going to take your word for everything. And if anything goes wrong... I want you to call me, and I'll see that we get a new keeper for the zoo. Certainly, Mrs. Mayor, I'll take care of everything. Everything. You Tennessee tuxedo, I'm going to... Ah, uh, ah, uh, 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 Stanley, I'll call Mrs. Mayor. No! Now we're going to have some changes around here. Ice cream three times a day. Uh, chocolate cake? Right, and soda with every meal. Uh, lots of candy? But most important, lots of nice fresh vegetables from our own garden. No, never. No gardens, I refuse. Ah, uh, uh, Stanley, I'll have to call the mayor's wife. No, 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 not that. But I don't know anything about gardening. Neither do I, but I know where to find out. 
And while we're gone, sweep up around here. Won't you, Stanley? So you see, Mr. Whoopi, we'd like to learn about growing vegetables. Well, got a touch of the old green thumb, eh? Oh, yes. Well, now, I'm sure we can cover the ground on that. Get it? Ground? Oh, yes, I always like to inject a little humor. Well, let's see what the three-dimensional blackboard has to say about that. The first thing to do in planting anything is to prepare the ground. This is done by breaking up the soil with a tool called a plow. Early man used a forked stick, which he scraped along the ground. Then he developed a hoe and a spade and even a man-powered plow. Later, he used horses or oxen to pull his plow. But now, of course, we use tractors. Uh, but gee, Tennessee, we haven't got any tractor. No, Chumley, but we can hook up Stanley. <laughs> hook up Stanley, that's pretty good. Hmm, yes, well, the plow blade cuts into the earth and turns it over to one side. The groove that it cuts is called a furrow. Cutting furrows breaks up the hard soil and lets the sun and air get in. But the plow breaks the earth into fairly large lumps. So the farmer now uses a tool called a harrow, which is dragged over the plowed field to crumble up the large lumps and level the surface to make it ready for planting. Get it? Remember that, Chumley? First plow, then harrow. Right. It used to be that men walked through the fields with big sacks and cast the seed over the ground. That's where we get the word broadcasting. But the modern farmer uses a machine called a drill, which places the seed evenly in the ground exactly as deep as the farmer wants it, and then covers it over with earth. Great. And that's all there is to it. Oh, no, 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 my boy. The farmer's work is never really done. For instance, once the seeds begin to come up, the garden has to be cultivated with a hoe or a mechanical cultivator. That means removing the weeds from around the plant and loosening the soil so that it will hold more water and so that the roots can grow more freely and get more air. Then, if there's plenty of water and sunshine and air, the plants will grow and whoopee, you'll have a garden! Phineas J. Whoopee, you're the greatest. Thanks a million. Come on, Chumley. <laughs> This is the life, Chumley. Stanley's so afraid I'll get him in trouble with the mayor's wife, he'll do anything I say. Oh, Stanley, now that you've finished the plowing, run on up and get us some ice cream. It's very hot. Genesee, one of these days. Ah, uh, 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 Stanley, I'll have to call the mayor's wife and tell her. No, no, don't do that. Yo, oh, one of these days, the mayor's wife will go on a trip or something and Tennessee won't be able to call her. And then, then... Yeah, hello. Oh, Mr. Mayor. What? Your wife has gone on a trip around the world and won't be back for a year? Oh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. All right, Stanley, where's our ice cream? There isn't going to be any ice cream. Stanley, I gave you an order. Stanley. Stanley, I'll phone the mayor's wife. I'll phone. All right, Stanley. I'd like to speak with Mrs. Mayor. What? She's gone around the world. She won't be back for a year. Uh, uh... Now wait, Stanley. Now, now, now just wait a minute, Stanley. Yes, yeah, so, you wanted fresh vegetables, did you? <laughs> you wanted a garden, did you? <laughs> New shipment of pickles arrive at Fort? Whoopie doopie! I love them pickles. But how we get? Oh, you scout them round Fort and find them way to get pickles. Good, good. And at that very moment, things at the Fort were in somewhat of a mess. Colonel Kit Coyote's Aunt Flora had come for a visit. And she was upsetting the whole fort by planting flowers everywhere. 
in the tower, in the bugles, over the windows and gun ports. The colonel was wild. And Flora, you've got to stop planting flowers everywhere. Flowers in the file drawer. Flowers in the desk. Regulations are strictly against it. It says right here in the book that... <laughs> but, Sonny, flowers are so pretty. They sort of fancy up the place. Forts aren't supposed to be fancy. I have all my men running around taking out flowers from the ridiculous places that you planted them. No man is at his post. The gophers could walk in here and take everything we've got. Uh-huh. Colonel is so busy with Aunt Flora, him no can stop us from taking pickles. Whoopie doopie, let's go. <laughs> Indians! Indians, I knew it! They're stealing the pickles. Sergeant? Uh, Corporal Crump reporting, sir. Uh, sergeant's a little under the weather. Oh, oh, oh yeah, Corporal Crimp. Uh, give me that. Uh, have the men grab their swords and chase those Indians. Oh, well, I can't do that, Colonel. And uh, uh, No swords. No swords? Uh, your Aunt Flora used them to stake up her roses, see? Aunt Flora! Land sakes, what's all the fuss? The swords, the swords! Yes, don't they work fine for the roses? <laughs> Two more barrels of pickles back at Fort. We go get. <laughs> oh, you think Fort be all fouled up for a long time? Good, let's go. <laughs> to the pickles again, eh? Charge! Charge! Grab your guns! Shoot them! Shoot them! Corporal, what damnation is going on around here? Aunt Flora! Aunt Flora? Yes, sir. She was using the stack guns for her morning glory vines. Aunt Flora! Land sakes! What's all the fuss this time, Sonny? The guns! The guns! Oh, yes. Didn't they look nice with the morning glory vines growing all over them? I declare I do love flowers. <laughs> One more pickle barrel left at Fort. We go them back. <laughs> we have no trouble with Colonel as long as Aunt Flora is there. <laughs> you right. Indians! Indians! It's time I'll get them myself. I'll blast them with the cannon. Let me at that cannon, Corporal. But, Colonel! No but Corporal. Ready? Colonel, there's something you should know, sir. Later, later. Hey. In the cannon, sir. Fire! Well, it looks like Aunt Flora and her flowers got the Colonel into a real pickle. I bet I can dream up a little fun myself in our next adventure. Stick with me. I'll be seeing you. Underdog and Sweet Polly had been captured by the Cloud Men and thrown into the silver bin to be melted. But the Cloud Men didn't realize that the pile of silver would drain off the electricity which had shocked Underdog and Sweet Polly, leaving them alive but weak. Underdog! Underdog! We're going to be scooped up! My ring. My ring. Your ring has been stolen. Weak. So weak. Meanwhile, back on Earth, the city of Washington, D.C. prepared for attack. What's all the excitement? The clouds, the clouds. Clouds? What's so bad about clouds? What's so bad? Did you ever see clouds in formation? Surrender. Wow. Must be those cloud men Underdog was talking about. But where is Underdog? Lightning, short them! Get that silver! Lightning, short them!
underdog and sweet Polly were getting closer and closer to the melting pot. My ring, here it is. The secret compartment of my ring I fill with an underdog super energy pill. Oh, underdog, you saved me. Of course I did, but now we must go. In saving the silver, I must not be slow. Where is everybody? Where is King Cumulus Regulus? Here, with all the silver from the Treasury of the United States. Stealing things is very wrong. You won't keep that silver long. Who's going to stop me? You little droplet. You tried before, remember? energy now and moving with the speed of light dodged the barrage of lightning jolts underdog dodged closer and closer to king cumulus regulus until at last oh i've been short circuited i've no more lightning jolts now i'm the one who's in command stop stealing silver i demand but we need silver. All we've got is gold. And every cloud must have a silver lining to be happy. Well, instead of stealing it, why don't you trade gold for it? And that's exactly what King Cumulus Regulus did. He started trading with the Earth, and soon every cloud had a silver lining. And there was peace once again, and once again people looked up and said, Look in the sky, it's a plane! It's a bite! It's a frog! A frog? Not plane, nor bird, nor even frog. It's just little old me. <laughs> Underdog. Underdog.